Hi, I'm Bodron and welcome to Extra Time. Please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Tonight, what we start, Beth Carton. Welcome to the show, Beth. Thanks very much, Bevan, Jane, and Shane there. Um, uh, thrilled to be on, and it's, it's, it's great what you're doing there. So fair play, Chi. So we'll start by asking you, what age did you start playing with De La Salle? Um, I was young enough anyway, I say, um, as soon as you know, I could have a hurley, I could hold a hurley, my dad had a, hur um, a hurley in my hand. I say it was about four, I say nearly when I was up with the, with the beginners there in the club and I would have started playing with the boys because uh, we had no camogie club there till I say I was about 10 or 11. So a good few of us just went up, um, I say like a, like a lot of yourselves and started with the boys and then eventually transferred over to the camogie. I say I was about probably four or five when I started up and down the south. Um, do you spend much time practicing skills yourself, like free taking and sidelines? Yeah, definitely. Um, I wouldn't be the best at the sidelines now. Um, I leave that to to Miss Rocket now, so I would. But um, no, I would. The the freeze would um, the freeze would I suppose take up a nice bit of time, especially in season. Um just I suppose fine-tuning them and you'd, it's a lot away from training and it's a lot more I suppose individual than the team aspect of it is um, trying to get that right um, and I did change the technique a bit there recently so that did affect it a lot and that did I suppose take a lot of work but um, no look it's enjoyable as well but certainly there would be um, any chance you get I suppose it's just um, the way I look at it the more times you have the hurley in the hand certainly the better it is for you in the long run. Um, would you have been successful playing county underage? Um, yeah, we would have been to an extent. I suppose we got a, a nice group together. Um, we would have been in the second division. So um, we won an under 16B, um, which gave us the chance, I suppose, to go up A um, and play minor A, which was massive. But um, at the time, I suppose we would be successful, but it would have been probably in a lower division until we reached that minor mark. Um, I played two years minor A and I only won one match, I think, but it was it was worth it to get up and play at that level um and get that one win. Um rather than I suppose um we were thrilled with the with the B win under sixteen, but it was time for us and if we were going to try to compete at senior level, um we needed to get up in the A division. So I wouldn't say we had loads of success, um, but we were competing at the highest level, which was probably the most important. Um, when you were growing up, did you have any role models or anyone you looked up to? Yeah, I suppose um, plenty of them in sports, and we were lucky enough in our, in the club as well. Um, a massive one would be John Milan, I suppose, because um, being from my own club, and and um, my dad, I suppose, would know him well, and that seen what he did, and I suppose coming from De La Salle would have been certainly a massive one. Um, when I was younger, then I would have went to a, um, a nice few of the Camogie games as well, when I suppose a lot of people probably weren't going, so you'd be looking up players like um, Karen Kelly, Jenny Simpson, Charlotte Rather, and players like that. Um, so certainly plenty of role models um, with, I suppose, John Milan being so close to home would have been one of the, the major ones there. Um, probably grew up in a time where, not like maybe now as such, um, women's sports wouldn't have been, I suppose, profiled as much as it is now especially with 2020 and aspects like that. So it probably would have been more the male side of it, but I think that, that is certainly changing now and, and is for myself anyway. And Beth, can I just ask you, I suppose, well, it seemed, it'll probably seem like 100 years ago to them, but when I was actually on a teacher practice, uh, I, I went to the Mercy and they'd just been incredibly successful. Trish Jackman would have been the main star of that team. And then I suppose yeah. in Kilmac Thomas, we won in All-Ireland and you had Claire White and you had Neve Rocket. And then you also, then I suppose the next, St. Angela is very successful. So yeah. secondary schools seem to play a massive part in the development of a lot of players in Waterford. Big time, yeah. And as you said there, when I was actually on my placement, I was in the earth line myself um, when they won it. And to see the talent in there and from the many different clubs and um, you have the likes of Emily Darmody and Conor O'Toole really pushing it in there. It certainly does transfer on to that. A lot of them went on to win the first um, minor Munster, um, a Camogie championship there. Um, so it does certainly seem to transfer. And it is 
when you look at it, um, girls and young lads spend so much time in school. Um, if they can, um, it's the time I suppose if you can, if they can uh, really progress and uh, play as much as they can during that time while while doing school now as well. Um, but it is certainly you no, know, it's massive, and as you said there, you can see from the development of water at Camogie is nearly in parallel to the development in schools. Definitely. And what's it like? What was it like for you to be playing school Camogie? Um, I absolutely love school camogie. Even even looking back now, um, we had some brilliant days. Um, and with Brianna Regan, the goalkeeper for Watford, now would have went to um, the presentation as well. And look, we weren't we weren't great by any means, but we had um, it was just a group of friends, I suppose, going off playing. Um, and I suppose that time you get to go off on the bus and you're travelling together. And I think we were in C and Ds, but we, we gave it everything and we thought it was at the time. Um, absolutely, every it was everything to us at that time as well. And um, we would have been poking around at lunch times in school and stuff like that. So I suppose it's playing with, with some of your best friends that you're spending all days with as well. So it certainly was. And when I look back now, some of my, my fondest memories were going playing with the presentation. And um, what was it like playing college camogie? Was it hard to balance it with work and exams? Yeah, great question, Jane. Um, it would have been, yeah, it would have been difficult at times. You had, um, I suppose, you had your inter-county, your club, and then college. And then while in college, you're trying to, I suppose, work part-time um, as well and bring that aspect into it as well. And then you're studying college as well. So it certainly was, but it was, um, it was definitely a great experience um, you get the chance I suppose to play with girls that you never thought you would from different counties um, and you're playing with girls you're living with in college and that as well so while it was hard um, and at times it was hard I suppose to balance that aspect um, to get everything and sometimes you mightn't get it all right but um, it certainly was worth it and I think it's, it's certainly where my game probably developed um, in, in a college setting and playing with the very best it must give you confidence, though. I suppose, like in WIT, you have a lot of you probably play with a lot of the girls who are playing in multiple all Ireland finals now for Kilkenny, and you know that you're you're every bit as good as they are, I suppose. But it's it's just a different setting as well. But like that must give you confidence, to know that you know you personally, but also a lot of the Warford girls can come up to that level in the in in the next few years. Yeah, that's it, and I think again it comes on from the school as well, like you said earlier about um. The school nearly being in parallel to the Watford Camogie. I think the college is having an awful lot. And as you said yourself there, it does give you that um that confidence that you can play at the top. With a with a county like Watford, we're trying to, I suppose, progress and get there. Um and I think any bit of confidence girls can get and showing um last year now when we when we won it, um Kate Lynch and Annie Fitzgerald were playing. So they were two masses. They came from the earth line, one with the earth line and then came up and played with us. So that certainly was as um, I suppose shown again the confidence that girls have and that you can go up against the Cork, the Kilkenny and the Galway in a different setting as you said there but you're able to play with them and play against them and, and certainly um, I suppose uh, match them in, 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 sense, in a sense like that. Uh, so when did you first join the senior panel? Um, I joined my first year was in 2015 and um, when I came up first we were we were playing intermediate and um, so we actually won the intermediate that year there was a good few of us from the we were still in our last year minor um, our la no second last year minor we two we, we were there was a good crowd of us that were 17 coming up so it was in 2015 um, and we won the intermediate and Beth Kildare that year in us um, and I suppose you'd be thinking your first year up and you win all Ireland in Crow Park that it's going to happen every year but it certainly didn't happen that way but um, no a great first year and and it was great to, to win that and get up senior. Um, you have two All-Stars already and what was the All-Star trip like and what was the experience like? It was um, an amazing experience, I must say. It's probably something, especially I was in my last year of college, I definitely wouldn't have been able to go to, to America, to New York um, in my last year. And it was just, um, it was amazing. And to um, kind of, like I said earlier, to play, to get that chance to play with some of, some of your role models as well, the likes of Neil Kilkenny um, and Sarah Durbin and them from Galway and places like that. Um, it was amazing. And to go with... Um, 
to to go with Lorraine and Neve was was a very nice experience as well and and see um see the world I suppose through through Camogie that um I certainly never thought I'd get that chance to, um and I suppose to have fun as well with girls that you're constantly playing against um you go out I suppose um nearly hitting each other in a game and then you can turn around and go on a trip like that so we were so well looked after by the Camogie and it really does I suppose it shows how far Camogie has come in general and how far women's sport has come to be able to um, put on something like that and, and, and how well it was run and, and how well we were looked after. And uh, Beth, I suppose, like, there's been, I, I find there's been a massive sea change, especially in the school in the last, I suppose, 10 years. Camogie's always been, you know, pretty popular, but football was always a massive thing because this, we had so many girls who played football but in the, in the last number of years I see there's a real passion for camogie and more and more players so like a lot of that I suppose would have been you know, due to a lot of those girls over the last number of years seeing the men's team but now that the women's team has started to become successful how is important how important is it that they see role models rather than John Milan that they see Beck Carton Neve Rockers Lorraine Bray and these types of um, you know uh, women playing the sport yeah, that's it. And certainly before it would have been, as you said there, it would have been the men going well and you'd see girls and boys out with Hurley's. But I certainly think, and with the Kongi, um starting to show more more live matches, um, that certainly is a big aspect of it. And and even by by us as well, um, I suppose attending clubs and doing, I suppose, promoting it that bit more as well. Certainly, so girls know that there is girls out there that play as well. And as you said there, it's not just, you're not just looking at, I suppose, nowadays your Austin Gleasons are in your Callum Lines and that you're looking at the girl aspect of it as well. Um, I, certainly, it's certainly um, extremely important and, and something that we hope as um, Warford Senior Camogie players that we can uh, provide that, that good role model and that, um, that, that person that the young kids can look up to. And hopefully the more that happens, the more girls that take hurdies in their hands from a young age. So obviously last year they brought in new rules to the Camogie. What do you think of them? Um, yeah, I think I can see where they're going with them and I think some of them are very good. Um, I do think some of them are maybe that small bit, just need to be refined a small bit more. The shoulder one can be can be a bit kind of in matches, depending a lot on the referee and stuff like that. But I do think the Camogie are certainly heading in the right direction. Um, the hand pass goal I know myself from being very good friends with, with Brianna she absolutely hates it so she's thrilled that that's gone and it was probably an aspect that some of us that played the hurling found a bit hard to bring in the hand pass goal because we wouldn't have been used to it so I certainly think they are I can see what they're trying to do and they're trying to make it a quicker game um, I do think that some aspects probably do need to be refined and, and will be but I certainly think the Camogie are starting to listen and starting to go in the right direction with it all um, what do you think that Waterford need to do to get past their quarter final stage and progress further? Um, very good question. <laughs> um, I do think. Um, look, we probably we were very disappointed last year after it, um, and there's no point saying otherwise. Um, it's probably just a stage where a bit of luck might come into it too. But um, just putting the head down again now this year and working extremely hard and. Looking back on where we went wrong over the, the previous three years now, um, I suppose the first year we got there, it was nearly a novelty. Um, and then the second year, we were, we were up against a better opposition in Galway. Um, so it's just trying to, I suppose, get back there first and then, and then take it from there. But each year, and it's probably the killer with it as well, each year is such a fresh year and a fresh start. There's no guarantee that we will... Uh, we're going to get anywhere near it again. So it's just taking each game as they come and um, working hard now uh, now through the preseason and um, getting that fitness and the hurling where it is and then and then everything else will, will hopefully take care of itself. And Beth, I suppose uh, I know you know Neve Rockets in school as well and it, it's yeah. easy to it's easy to look from the outside in and have an opinion. But one of the things that I would have looked at G and said, look, you're very young. Uh, most of the team is, is especially gains can be made in S and C because I, I, even looking at Tipperary last year, like yeah. they seem to be a few of the players seem to be a lot more powerful than a lot of the Waterford girls, and like yeah. look that is 
unfortunately that's just like with the men especially see Limerick right they're more powerful than you know a lot of the teams and it does make a huge difference so yeah. like um, and, and I suppose when you have a new management team coming in say in January that's that's months of, of S&C work that's not being done so I suppose how important is it to get that continuity going over the next couple of years where girls are year round working on S&C yeah that's massive and it's gone as you said there, it's gone such a big part of it. If you see the transformation from that Limerick team from when they were a minor to now, it has been immense. And and I think some traditional hurling people probably don't like hearing it, but S and C is becoming such a big part of it. Um, and as you said there, I think it's getting the young girls through um, from minor from sixteen on, and and getting them into that. Look, they don't have to be obviously lifting weights at that age, but it's getting them into that mindset of doing S and C and. And even down to injury prevention and that aspect of it has gone so big. So no, certainly, and and that was probably one of the major things we took from that tip game was that we were probably, especially um, out around um, the middle third, they won a lot. So the, the physicality of that sense, but um, it's just buying into it now and getting even, I know, as you said there with the January, and it is a strange year again, gyms closed and, and all that aspect, but it is becoming such a big part. And I do think, um, that's where these academies and development squads and that come into it as well, getting girls ready for when they do come to that senior level and, and starting in staff. Because to be honest, when I was starting, I wouldn't have done. And it was a 16 minor, there would have been none of this really. So it is kind of, it is kind of getting there, um, but getting there slowly probably. So you played in all four, six, four positions for Waterford. Do you have any preference? In them, um, I suppose my favourite would probably be centre forward. Um, sometimes I I play anywhere now, but sometimes if you're in full forward and you're not having the best day, you can be a tough space as well. Um, and I just feel centre forward, you can you can get on a bit of ball out there. Um, there is more ball out there actually, and then you're not confined probably to either wing as well. So if I had to choose, say I'd say centre forward, but with the way I suppose the game has gone nearly all of the positions are so interchangeable that if you're in centre you could be on the wing any second and, and, and that so um, if I had to go with one I'd say centre forward um, Do you enjoy getting involved in younger age teams or coaching? Yeah definitely um, I suppose through being a being a PE teacher in that as well I certainly do um, do love it um, I'd be involved with the under 12 Camogie in Dallas Hall and I'd I'd help out with the, the little lads, the beginners of a Saturday morning. And it's great to see, suppose you see the true enjoyment of it at, at that age. And they're just coming up playing with their friends, the wanting to wanting to poke around the ball and have a bit of fun. Um, and it really brings that that aspect of it back to it. Um, especially with the, the five and six year olds up there now, um, anything can be going on. So no, certainly I do enjoy it and I do um I suppose that brings in the, the teaching side of it. Um, I love my profession as well. So, yeah, and I'm hoping, hoping in years to come to certainly stay involved in that aspect as well. Do you want to tell us a bit about the fundraiser that the senior team is holding? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, um, we're doing a virtual 5K run, uh, not a first, sorry, we're doing a virtual run to Croker on the uh, 27th of February. Um, and there's a GoFundMe fund me page up at the moment so we're trying to basically raise funds for the year ahead um it goes without saying that there isn't um, much funding for sports at the moment especially with covid and then and then for camogie and um, so anything we raise is going towards our senior camogie training fund so um we're just trying to get up to the to the 10 grand mark if possible and um and every bit helps so we're after getting great and it's, it's lovely to see us there's so much support for us um, in that sense so you could be nominated to run the 5k so you donate five euro and um, you run 5k and then you donate five other people so i'm not sure if any of you have been uh, nominated yet but you could be over the next few weeks so it's just um it look it's for it this could set us up really nicely for the for the year ahead and and take that worry away from us and allow us to concentrate just on the game so if, so if anyone um, is listening and would like to run 5K and donate, that would be great. 
Um, you mentioned earlier, like your your PE teacher in college, and obviously, like having been in UL myself, I it's it's a, it's a one where you know PE teachers generally like are obviously drawn to sport by their very nature, and um, like but also like you education wise like you you know it's nutrition it's hydration it's like you said s and c like yeah. i mean that must it's a great education would you, would you see yourself becoming now a big mentor for younger players coming onto the panel as well because you have that education and say i suppose physical literacy moving forward yeah um look it certainly does help that aspect of it and if it's something you're interested in um it helps even more than again um, with the young players coming onto the panel, certainly, and if, look, I wouldn't be any expert in, in the nutrition and that side of it, but if I could help at all, um, I certainly would. I it, We always get a good um, a good buzz and excitement off young players coming on the panel. Um, um, any of the older girls would tell you that, um, any of the girls. Um, literally, just when you see a, a younger come in and, and get on so well with the, with the panel, and we've had a nice few between... Um, recently, Sarah Lacey, Annie Fitzgerald, Kate Lynch in that crowd. Um, we all get on, if anyone knows the dynamic team, we do get on very well and you'd be hoping that um, the girls would be able to ask you anything and certainly um, from, my, and there's a few PE teachers there um, and a few teachers in general that we would be able to help any way possible. Um, how are you keeping up your fitness levels during the current lockdown? Yes, yeah, it's, it's very hard. It's gone back to doing it on, on my own again, which which is nearly harder this time around. But um, no, look, we're we're on a plan and just doing running and doing any any gym stuff I have at home and that. But um, I suppose the running on my own is just to try to keep that going. Um, and that, I suppose that's the hardest the hardest thing nearly and just getting out with the hurry off the wall as much as possible. You certainly miss um, and this time around even more probably because it's not new. You'd certainly miss the team aspect of it um, and that side of it. You're nearly like um, individual um, athletes for a bit. So um, that certainly is hard. But no, look, just for the head and, and while I'm working on that, just getting out, going for the run that we have to get done and, and doing the gym stuff um, that I can do at home. Uh, do you have any specific routines that you would do before a match? Um, I, the morning of a match, I would usually go visit um, my granddad just the morning of big games and um, just for a chat. But before, I, I wouldn't be overly superstitious. Um, I wouldn't do it really the night before that I'd have all the work done and, and I'd kind of just um, go play. I wouldn't be too superstitious. I know certain girls have, have certain things that they must do before a match, but um, no, I won't be too bad now. Um, once I have the gear ready and it's ready to go, I'm not too bad. Uh, Beth, just before we finish up there, I just want to ask you, um, do you think there's a future for uh, Neve Rocket in TV? Because I've, I've heard that, I've heard people call her, I've actually heard people call her the, the Waterford Anagiri. Um, <laughs> like, because if, if she does move on to TV, there's always a job for me in St. Declan's. I wanted to let you know that. <laughs> Thanks very much. I say there's a good chance she could be heading there now. <laughs> so there's a job for me. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, Little Woods, Little Woods are, are keeping her well in fashion. Well, yeah, sure. Little Woods are looking after her anyway. <laughs> I'd like to thank Beth for joining us tonight and we wish you and Miss Rocket and the panel the best in 2021. Again, I ask you to hit the like button and subscribe. We have more big guests to come next week, so keep an eye out. See you all soon on Extra Time.